Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take hello, that hello. midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux. I'm Vince Stone here at LGC Actual and joined every week by Jill Bryant in Space LA and across the pond, that is one Pedro Mateus. Hello. And everyone <laughs> joining us live. How's it going? It's going to be another great week for Linux indeed. Yes. Everybody's been up mm -hmm. to a bunch of stuff. I know in the pre-show, Joe's like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, hey, it's fine. I, here's my keyboard. So. <laughs> Go on, show <Chantel>. Yes. <laughs> so this is my new keyboard, RGB, all the things. Um, actually, I've had I had a pink mechanical keyboard with RGB, but this is the first Bluetooth one that I'm ever using. Uh, I never even, you know, this is a, a big deal because I've I've avoided using wireless in production <laughs> when I'm streaming and and podcasting. <laughs> but this one is working just fine. And um, what's nice is it, it's got a place for uh, to put your tablet and cell phone, and I can put four Bluetooth devices on it. And it also has wired as well. So if anything goes wonky, I have my wired cable right here just in case. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really pretty and it's, it, it's nice. It's, it's unique too. And it's actually, it feels mechanical, but it is not. So, but it's very high quality. <laughs> Pedro, have you been up to anything? Not yet, though I am... Um, those are dangerous I, words, my friend. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I am now in possession of uh, what I need for the next revision of the uh, Steam box. Mm -hmm. The last bit I was waiting for was uh, this cable, which looks like, you know, your standard Y splitter <laughs> for PWM fans. Except for this connector. This connector goes onto GPU. Fan connectors, the uh, teeny tiny ones. Mm. So, yeah, um, remains to be seen if it will fit in the uh, 1650, but even if it doesn't, I can just pull the uh, the pins out and um, improvise <laughs> to connect the <laughs> the two Noctua fans like, instead of those screechy Zotac cable, ones. Right? Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is a very single-use cable. The, the, it, mm -hmm. it was on the very, very slow boat from China, and it was very, very cheap. But, yeah, no, it, this is for that, because if it's not for that, I have no idea what I'll use it for. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I brought that up, as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, I got random cables like that. I'm like, what was that used for? You know, we're talking five years from now. I'm like, ah, I remember. I should probably try to use that. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful people. I've been up to a lot of stuff, um, up to yeah, and including um, 2021. It's rolled out. I'm trying to do a bunch of new stuff. Um, one thing that I've posted is if you're curious about how we do captions, if you're watching us live on Twitch. There's a video currently up on our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That'll show you how to do it. You don't need to be a patron to look at it. Just go there. It's about three minutes. Simple enough. Pedro looked at it and was like, I got this. Boom. Done. He tested it out last night. There's no reason mm -hmm. not to have it enabled if you're doing live streaming. Doesn't work very well with um, YouTube Live. Do keep that in mind. And while you're there, if you're curious about uh, some audio production stuff, I did a really quick um, interfacing Linux. I wasn't planning on even recording it. I was in here messing around doing some stuff. And I'm like, hey, let me show you the importance of just doing some basic EQ on a vocal track and how that can clean up you know, like a lower bit rate audio and just tune it up a little bit, make it sound a little bit better before you send it out to other people. And on top of that, we were talking about this in the pre-show. Amazon knows I like video capture devices and stuff like that. And it recommended to me what I dare say is the cheapest HDMI capture card available on Amazon that does claims to 1080p60. It was like $18. I had to buy it. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned for that probably next week because the hipster sound card is going to be showing up and I'm going to be plugging that in and doing post-production work on that. But I'm curious as to what we can get away with for $18 in 2021 for 1080p mm -hmm. 60 capture under Linux because theoretically mm -hmm. it should know cool. how to Linux. And if it doesn't, say it's a device and whatnot. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get right into it this week with... Pedro Mateus's favorite desktop manager, GNOME. 
Now, yes. This, this is coming from OMG yeah. Ubuntu, and they're talking about a bold new look. The beginning, uh, man, people are cranky about this for some reason. We, uh, <laughs> like the masses just do not seem pleased. And this is all about GNOME 40. And I personally, I'm looking at it and it still kind of looks like GNOME to me, man. I, I, I don't see the <laughs> big issues with it. Uh, there'll be a couple of links in the show notes to a couple of separate threads where people have just lost their stuff, man. But <laughs> it, it seems like the big switch is they're going from uh, like vertical workspaces, right? From horizontal to vertical, moving away from that. And Correct. Yeah. I, I've always looked at GNOME <laughs> as like, it, it, it's just an end user desktop. It's something like, hey, I'll check my mail, I'll check web browser, play a game. Never really geared towards productivity so much. So I don't understand why people are so mad, Pedro Mateos. <laughs> because <laughs> it's once again, the GNOME team breaking away from something that they themselves established and they're moving away from it, not giving people the option to, unless they want to stay on the old version. Yeah, no, you're going to have to use the new thing. You're going to have to use the new layout. You're going to do things as we want you to do things. Sound familiar? Because that is very much how they ended up creating, or they didn't create it themselves, but they spawned uh, Cinnamon and Mate no, no. when they moved from GNOME <laughs> 2 to GNOME 3. I will say fair, but, <laughs> but to their credit, you got to think about it like this. The people who are upset really like GNOME 3. Yes. <laughs> they like the Look, workflow, someone had yes. to like it, otherwise they would have dropped it immediately, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess the Unity desktop environment is still being developed, so... <laughs> I, I'm just not educated enough to talk to it. I've, I've looked at it and I've read the arguments, and uh, welcome to Linux. Just use something else, man. I understand yeah. being upset mm -hmm. about something that you love changing, but I, I kind of feel like Maybe to Pedro's point, if you weren't around from the GNOME 2 to GNOME 3, switch over that. They, GNOME's got a vision, and they're going to rock and roll with that. So kind of like just get on that vision train or... It's, it, but their vision keeps changing and no one else, uh, or at least a chunk of their uh, active user base doesn't seem to uh, Look, follow their somebody's vision. Somebody's got to try it, man. Somebody's got to <laughs> They got to be visionaries, yeah. man. Well, I actually am looking forward to the new changes. Uh, to me, it's time time for a refresh. And I don't think this isn't going to be as big a change from going from GNOME 2 to GNOME 3. And uh, for it, the other cool thing is that for those of us who use vertical monitors, I have two of them here, it's nice to know that GNOME 40, uh, the GNOME 40 layout on them will still work as it always did. And um, it looks actually to me like GNOME is going to be even more Mac OS like that's yeah. kind of the the feeling I got, and I kind of agree though with with um, and Fox Dog in chat. He says, "Why is this such a big deal? It's not even that big of a change." <laughs> and I know a lot of people have said that, but even small changes to someone who's used to the work workflow of GNOME, um, this could be a big deal. So I understand. <laughs> I think change is fine. It's just. Doing what GNOME does, which is not give people the chance to they go surprise back. everyone. Yes, but it's like <laughs> no, you you're using this because we say you're using that, and that's how GNOME two went from having you know the majority of the desktop share in Linux to sharing it with KDE mm -hmm. and XFCE and all the others. It's like oh, you're not the dominant yeah. one anymore, are you? <laughs> it's still the default does stuff for everything, so I, I think they're like laughs and gnome to that stage. <laughs> well, for Fedora and Ubuntu, which arguably, uh, yes. Yeah, the <laughs> two biggest ones. <laughs> the two big ones, yes. Yeah. I got you back, gnome. I got you back. Um, yeah. How do you pronounce this? Though? Asahi uh, Linux. <laughs> yeah so so i know what it means it means rising sun in japanese <laughs> so this is asahi linux it's the new linux port for apple silicon max created by one of our favorite developers hector martin and uh, this is including the 2020 m1 mac mini the macbook air and macbook pro 
And what's really awesome about this project is the goal is not just to make Linux run on the machines, but make it polished enough for, you know, a daily driver that we can all use every day. And uh, Hector Martin wants actually to create a, a friendly community for the project with documentation, a GitHub wiki, and IRC chat. And uh, what better developer to do this than Hector Martin? I, I think he's going to do a great job. And he's making it very easy to contribute to and is looking for all skill levels in Linux are welcome to contribute. Or you can support the project on Patreon or GitHub sponsors. So this th this is what we've been talking about, getting Linux on the M1 and uh, refactoring. <laughs> uh, Why and the set creating he wanted drivers. that? So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely interested in this because I've said multiple times the hardware I'm interested in. You know, I, I want to see what the M1 chip is capable of. And this is definitely the person to start playing around with it. You know, he's responsible for the PS4 and Linux, the port that had full 3D acceleration, OpenGL Vulkan, all that. Mm -hmm. Um, Apestos, the PS3 Linux bootloader for game OS mode. This yeah. Guy. And you might remember him as me hitting the wrong button. Uh, <laughs> yeah. you might remember that uh, recently he was the one who uh fixed the issues that obs had with jack yay know? so it, it, it this is the gotta get stuff done which almost yeah, makes I, I, well, I already like them yeah. <laughs> yeah. because it, of the ps4 stuff especially yes. and then the jack thing so and now he's working on getting linux on the m1 yeah no i'm i'm quickly becoming a fan <laughs> of mr martin here <laughs> indeed it definitely it kind of adds um to to some of the comedy and of the drama that went on with obs yeah. like, probably not the guy you want to tango with um, walked in, <laughs> did their job for them, slapped them in the face. They complained about it. He got back, <laughs> slapped them again. It's like, shut it. <laughs> well, unfortunately, uh, we need to throw all of our NVIDIA GPUs away. We got to burn them. Aww. Oh, yeah. Massively them. insecure. They are, man. Um, like every, every minute, man, it's like stealing money out of my wallet. I'm like, man. <laughs> We got to talk about this. There is a little bit of a security bulletin, man, uh, for the display drivers. This came out on January 2021 this month. It is uh, basically you got to have physical access to the machine. So it's one of those. But go ahead and get it patched. There's a gang of CVs that uh, ooky spooky might steal your money. I seriously doubt it. But you should. Uh, Pedro, you run the um, Ubuntu-like things. Have they already pushed out an update? Yes, uh, if you're mm -hmm. using the graphics drivers PPA to get your up-to-date NVIDIA drivers, mm -hmm. the uh, 460.3203 version is available. So you can just download. Uh, if you're on the 450 uh, or 455 version already, it'll do the automatic uh, rollover to the 460 version. It's just as soon as it does, reboot it, you're good to go. The thing that I was wondering is because they say, oh, yeah, 460.3203. I had a look at the website and the version of the driver that's available on the website is from January 7th. Mm -hmm. And this was released on the 11th. So they released it like three days or four days earlier to get everything in order because it doesn't mention the dot three at the end. <laughs> okay, first off, quit accusing NVIDIA for to um, like adhering to linear space time. <laughs> a. <laughs> okay, I've had enough of the I NVIDIA forgot. They dwell in right. the fourth dimension. Exactly. All right. <laughs> the, the leather jacket does as it well, man. Yes. But Jill, tell me about it, man. Is it yeah. big? It's dangerous? Yeah, actually, there was a really big fix in here that, you know, popped out to me and there's quite a few of them. But this one is the NVIDIA GPU display driver for Linux contains a vulnerability in the kernel mode layer in which it does not completely honor operating system file system permissions to pro provide GPU device level isolation. This may lead to denial of service or information disclosure. That's a and pretty big deal. Of privileges. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty big deal. It's not, you know, being contained. <laughs> Get it updated. And this is the part of the show where I will just repeat again. Learn to install 
drivers on Linux. Learn to install the dot run file. I, I get mm-hmm. I get friction. I get a little bit of blowback every time I say that people shouldn't shouldn't know how to do what install drivers for the operating system they're using. Is that the argument you're going to try to make to me? Because you will lose. I think it's the dropping to run level three that people have an issue with. <laughs> uh, let, let me try that again. Learning to install drivers for the operating system that you're using. <laughs> Yes, it's you very know how good. opposed people are to the idea of the terminal. Yeah, it's, I, I, I can bounce. Drop. Hang on, I'm getting a little sore in the throat. I can bounce my audio track back for the third time. <laughs> too, man. Um. No, that's great, Ben, because that, that's that's how I update my NVIDIA drivers. I always do it from a dot run. <laughs> this is. Uh, I, I don't know. This is so much I see online, which could be simplified. I, I saw, you know, I track. People on Twitter that usually have issues with audio stuff, video stuff under Linux. And I'm like, hey man, let me see if I can help you out. You know, just helping them with their Linux education, you know. But a lot of it can be boiled down to, I did this on a Mac, which I've been using for the past decade. Everything just worked. I tried it on <laughs> Linux, which I know nothing about and I've never used, and it didn't just work. But you didn't know anything about it. No. But it I plugged into the thing. <laughs> That's not a good argument, you know. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it didn't just work. It's not the same, therefore it's bad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so l- learn how to use what you're using. And I think it's a very dangerous thing to try to, you know, tell someone like, oh, you'll, you'll never have to use a command line. That's false. You will mm-hmm. still have to use a command line. That's the most prevalent form of uh, instructions and guides because it's the most reproducible across all distributions. You know, if I'm trying to tell somebody to do something, I'm not going to tell them how to do it under KWIN versus GNOME versus XFCE versus that Correct. one person yeah. that's running. Mm-hmm. I don't know what. Give me a good one. What's a fun one? Hi, three. <laughs> Enlightenment. Uh, well, the one that uh, Ikula said he refused support. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Oh, how funny our therapist put right when I said rat poison, our therapist put it in. <laughs> a long national nightmare. Is over. <laughs> R.I.P. Barry Allen. Oh yes, ding dong! The wicked witch is dead. <laughs> yeah, so this is the Flash player is dead. Adobe is officially blocking all content from running in the Flash <laughs> media player. Yay! So Microsoft ended support on December thirty first of twenty twenty, and the most recent versions of Google Chrome and Ed, Edge. Uh, Um, came without flash support and the new mozilla firefox browser number 85 due on january 26th is going to come without uh flash support so that's really good it's sad for all those wonderful flash games we like to play but uh, they are being converted over to newer technologies and being backed up on the internet archive (laughs) yes yes and you can use an emulator now to emulate flash so uh, when once they got a good emulator (laughs) then things changed (laughs) that that's the thing and don't worry there's an html5 or html5 version of zombocom we're safe (laughs) Um, (laughs) what are we using flash for in 2021 hopefully it's nothing but here's a frightening (laughs) thing most of the chatter i've seen at my group is so uh i got i got an email trail i've done this and you what i'm doing today ben i'm like what it's like looking for portable versions of firefox that uh still have um Flash support Flash. enabled, so yeah, I can deploy it throughout the thing. entirety of the company because X Y Z <laughs> requires it. Even though I said two years ago, and somehow this is my fault. How was your day going, Vin? I'm like, I don't have to do that anymore. Um, yeah, I do. Yeah, how's, how's yeah. the how's Pedro the does funny. system working? <laughs> and I had to do that when Firefox ESR went over version 52, and I basically had to create a portable version for Firefox ESR 32, uh, 32-bit version 52, mm. so that people could continue using Java. <laughs> and now something tells me I'm going to have to make sure that that particular version also runs Silverlight and Flash. <sighs> mm. Yeah. So, oh boy. Uh, yeah, no, convincing the NHS to drop 
Jaffa from the web, uh, Flash, and Silverlight, well, I've been working for them for three years and so far completely unsuccessful, so something's not going to change. <laughs> oh, boy. I would like, um, I know it'll never happen because Adobe go to Adobe, but I just like to release the source to Flash and just for archival reasons, just see what makes it tick internally. And that'll be good for preservation, but I would say RIP, future Splash player. We will not miss you. Not in the slightest. <laughs> yeah. Massive um, security vulnerability. <laughs> it it served its purpose a long time ago, and that purpose is yeah. gone. Look on the bright side. You know, I've outlived Java apps. I've outlived real players. Yes. <laughs> now I've outlived Flash. So, yeah. Had a good run. Had a good run. So, our theory in general, mm -hmm. um, I have an um, Amazon wish list for the studio, just stuff I'm going to buy as other people have learned, like, call me before you get anything, because some things are just placeholders or like things I'm planning on buying. But I had a um, AIO, what are those, what, what the kids have, you know, the blinky, water-cooled, <laughs> self-contained things for Jackbox, just bringing down the noise level here in the studio, because there's five PCs around me. And like all modern AIOs, it's a Corsair. Uh, a, we were just curious if it could actually cool a CPU because it is like a little tiny block, which it did. It. It's cooling 1700 just fine, but it's got RGB blinky stuff on the front. <laughs> it doesn't blink, fortunately, but it's the most blindingly it lights up the entire <laughs> the side of the room. When I got the box on, like, it's to get through the smoked uh, tempered glass so that people can see. <laughs> Man, so I was looking for something to cut it off. And I ran across this. This is a uh, liquid CTL cross platform CLI Python drivers for AIO liquid coolers and other devices. And I just thought it was neat. I want to give it a mention. I wasn't brave enough to try it because this has got a lot of like, it's experimental. It might not break. <laughs> something so i'm just gonna leave it alone um <laughs> it's there go play with it, it but that's the NZ, a bunch of the nzxt stuff man and it does support uh the corsair evgas and um what else do we have some of the asus stuff gigabyte not really my jam i just have this as more of a curiosity but it works it does a fantastic job it's just a bit bright so if you want to disable the what about open rgb too we have that yeah as yes. well. goodness <laughs> and uh as arthur yeah. points out uh open rgb and g kraken if you have one of the nzxd aios and that that's actually what's impressive about this one because it doesn't just do the RGB controls, it controls the fans, the pumps, uh, yeah, and the LEDs on a fat chunk of the really popular uh, AIOs. And yeah, you get LED controls for your RAM. So if you happen to have one of the AIOs that it supports and you also have blinky RAM, it's like, okay, let's try, see if it can do everything. Mm -hmm. that'd, that'd be very handy. You could see if you could cut it off and sync. Yes. <laughs> and my favorite bit about this one is it's a pip install away the pip install is best install danger pip yes <laughs> i don't mind pip i don't mind the pip install six eggs hmm. it's got to pull all the pythons yeah. not this project in particular but i've, I've seen some chunky like mm-hmm Pip install. Like, yeah. it's like, if you import all the modules, <laughs> it's going to download all the modules. That's <laughs> <laughs> so. Ven needs a rainbow vomit killer, as we all know. <laughs> so that's why he's looking forward to running this. He doesn't like keyboards like the one I showed earlier. <laughs> My keyboard <laughs> with rainbow vomit. <laughs> But what's yeah, really one awesome? Of the things that this one doesn't do keyboards. Yes, yeah, uh, very yeah. true, uh, very true. I used to use Open Razor with my Razor keyboards, and that works very well as well. Um, but what's really cool is that this has support for the LEDs on the ASUS Strix RTX 2080 Ti OC and EVGA GTX 1080 for the Win GPUs. It's still very experimental, but it does have support on Linux, which is awesome. And as well as the Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR4 RAM. Mm. So you can get your, you know, control your blinkies now under Linux. It, you know, it's still in experimental stages, but it's going to get better and better. 
You know what? Yes. N- next time I buy memory, I'm, I'm going to be buying ECC because that's what I've discovered about ECC RAM. It's ah, all green. It's yeah, just, it's old. Yeah, it's spreaders. It's RAM sticks. Old fashioned. Yeah, it's just, it's just plain, yes. I look forward I, I look forward to the next year. I'm building my retro build with it. No, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Server motherboard, green PCB. ECC RAM, green PCB. <laughs> you think I'm joking, but you know there's a market for just a plain green with a white slot. PC. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. YouTube channels like <laughs> your Vintage LGRs builds, right. and uh, your yeah. um, 8-bit guys and whatnot. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I love running across utilities. You'll definitely see them show up in this show. I'm like, I bet I could do something delightfully malicious with this. This is this is not an exception, Pedro. <laughs> no, no, this no, it is not. Really this cool. one seems designed <laughs> for that because, yeah, it it is TMP SMS and it sets a temporary uh, SMS uh, message system that you can uh, receive messages to, and you get to pick a number, and then you get to check, okay, show me how many messages I have received, and it shows you the messages in all their content. And as you can see in the little example, if you're looking at the video version, it's a lot of uh, two-factor authentication uh, login codes. That's very good. That's mm-hmm. very good. Uh, that is exactly the kind of thing you want to use if you don't necessarily trust a service that you're registering a, an account for. It's like, I'm using this burner email address. Why am I giving you my actual phone number? Let's use this. The quickest way, the quickest way for me not to use your um, two-factor, <laughs> looking at you, Steam, because for a long time I didn't use my Google Voice number. Mm-hmm. I punched that <laughs> and I'm like, I'm a... I have no idea mm. what my actual number is anymore. I'd have to go, <laughs> yeah. like, log into Google Voice and figure that out. But B, no. What, to what Pedro was saying. So th- this is Andy. I don't like services that bounce that. But this this could be very handy for automating testing, too. Yes. Yeah. Because you can script the whole thing. Exactly. <laughs> It's really nice. And honestly, this could be a game changer for someone who can't afford a classic phone service as well. And uh, if they're running Linux, you could have a temporary phone number that someone can SMS to. And this is or also if you're great abroad for and you're getting charged for every oh, yeah. text you There's receive. A, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. And also for emergencies or if your phone gets lost. This is, you know, a, a great, great project. Awesome. And I personally send SMS messages from Gmail on my desktop all the time. So having a, a number available to receive on the desktop is actually really handy. I'm, I'm going to be playing yes. with this for sure. <laughs> it's neat. Thought I'd bring it up, bro. Yeah, it is. Here we go. The service uh, that they use. <laughs> I'll take your segue in a moment. But yeah, uh, just to bring up Upmasked, which is the service that they use. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which they, uh, if you actually look at the uh, UpMass website, uh, currently they only have the free mm-hmm. SMS verification, which is what's pulling the temporary numbers to receive the messages. But there's more. They're they're planning on doing more stuff, and I'm very, very much looking forward to whatever they come up with next. Now, uh, this particular bro uh, disappointed me a little bit. <laughs> I was about bit. to say, man. The, wait, wait, okay. I, I, I didn't think I could be a bro no mo with like, the way you were just ignoring bro. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, this bro disappointed me because it didn't scream mildly sexual epithets or crush beer cans with his forehead. As far as I'm concerned, it's not a proper bro. But but that's because it's a browser tab controlling application for your CLI. Okay. Uh, the bro is short for browser. I, I, no, yeah. no, not <laughs> no. my dictionary. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it effectively lets you do... Um, I'd say arguably more than TabFS that we talked about last week or the week before. Well then. Uh, yeah. Let's you do because it lets you also reorient and move around tabs from different browser windows. So you can effectively get full control. Once again, fully scriptable because the CLI thing is actually very well done. So uh, if you set up some, which I'm guessing will be like the most widely used uh application for this you set up 
a script with a keyboard shortcut to do like specific things like move all tabs to one window spawn another one do this do that yeah um i was going to say it needed a gui but now that the keyboard uh shortcut idea popped into my head it's like no yeah no i think the keyboard shortcuts are going to be the way to go with this yes <laughs> i just you know <laughs> All I'm going to say is you run across some interesting things when you start Google searching how to convince someone their computer's haunted. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Yes, shenanigans. I'm just saying, there might have been a theme the past few weeks with um, random projects I've discovered. Uh. Oh, yeah, because you can SSH into the box and change someone's tabs around remotely. Like I said, <laughs> delightful maliciousness. I was surprised. <laughs> Shenanigans. <laughs> okay, well, that's going to be in our show notes. Uh, beautiful people, if you like what we do, come check us out at linuxgamecast.com. More importantly, head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Uh, you want to kick us some coin? Support the show. That's how we finance everything. It pays for hosting, equipment, all the other fun stuff, um, even for a dollar, one dollar a week. You get access to the pre pre super shows. And if you like this show, if you like this show, this is just like the little middle part. There's the entire beginning, middle, and end available in podcast format and video for you for helping us out, man. And a mm-hmm. uh, gang of stuff, man. Hop in our Discord. We get a bunch of, uh, I don't like putting anything behind a paywall, but, but when I'm working on something, I'm like, hey, man, let me get some feedback and we'll release it in general. <laughs> You're our beta testers. <laughs> yeah, that that's it. Yes. I'm like, did I, Pedro, Pedro's aware of this from like years and years and years. And like, did I do a dom in this? <laughs> Let me check. No, that's good. Oh, okay, and Pedro's great. I'm like, oh, Pedro was able to follow that. Cool. I can put it out. Um, <laughs> yes, I am the dumb one. I'm no. I, I'm aware of this. <laughs> I'm aware Pedro's of this. I have accepted my role in society. That's fine. <laughs> Pedro, you don't have to be so nice about it. <laughs> well, I guess I did run head first into the wall at full speed many times. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh you lot are brilliant. Thank you for getting name in the credits and all the fun stuff. Our eternal gratitude. And uh what else do we have? We got merch if you want to put us on your face. That's Yay. the way to do it, man. We Hello. got t-shirts. We got masks, because that's the thing now. But we got long t-shirts, short t-shirts, stickers, and uh, more stickers. Not a lot going yeah. on there, but they're available. I think Jill owns almost as many as I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> my, mine are more vintage, because I never opened them. Yeah, this is true. I do wear mine. <laughs> and make sure to get an LWW shirt. They're really pretty and neat. <laughs> uh, we got some people to think this week, Joe Bright. Yeah, so uh, we have Zeno, who's a new Patreon. Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> Congratulations and to us. And we also have Basil, who increased his pledge. He's Basil. been around for years. Basil, yeah. Basil. <laughs> well, he did uh, give uh, me uh, some stick because <laughs> I said Basil, but it's like, you're in the UK. You should be calling me Basil. It's like, all right. My bad. Uh, okay. <laughs> listen, I man, see. Listen, man. So I'm tomato, sorry, tomato. Basil. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was just a look of confusion of person behind the counter. It's like, tomato? Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thanks again. <laughs> Each and every one of you. Also, if you get uh, Amazon uh, Prime, get a Twitch sub. Throw that in there. Yes. I'll also kick you over to our Discord. And uh, yeah, that's it. Shameless self-promotion segment over. And time to this. Yay. Pie. Ooh, that looks like a yummy, yummy pie. I'm going to be honest. It looks like an afterthought pie. pie? I'm like, you know what? I bet I have enough dough left over to do this thing. Oh, it's either Blackberry Blackberry or someone uh, let a bit of the uh, filling out (laughs) and um, it burned. Pomegranate. But (laughs) no, Pedro, it's made of tar. (laughs) <laughs> I am tall. Just a whole pack of cigarettes in Pretty a pie. Uh, <laughs> but no, this uh this first pie project is uh interesting to say the least. Uh 
Dude had, uh, well, he caught the thing and he had to self-isolate for a while and his kids were like, why can't we talk to daddy? And they eventually ended up uh, explaining it to them, but just in the off chance that something like this would happen again, he decided to, you know, get his daughter and work on a project together. And the project was, well, an intercom. An intercom based around a Raspberry Pi with some big flashy buttons and a microphone that you talk into and a speaker for playing uh, when you're being talked at uh, all inside a box and uh, I looked at the like the, uh, the shots of the internals. I could that not looks- own a microphone like that because I would be constantly <laughs> uh, uh, I'd be leaning over to him like so yeah <laughs> To be fair, he just got that one because it was cheap, and it's like, oh, I can make this fit in the box uh, with nice. just minimal disassembly. So, yeah, and I could absolutely mm-hmm. see that. And that looks to be like one of the full size Raspberry Pis. I don't know if it's a four, but if that is a four, that particular intercom has more <laughs> processing power than most airplanes nowadays. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, it is very nice, but that whole pie could probably run the whole network if it comes on its own. Well, that's the whole thing. I mean, that, <laughs> yeah. that's a very delicate mixture of um, <laughs> communication, and I also desperately need something to do because that's nine pounds worth of walkie-talkies. Problem solved. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's still a new oh, project, and I like it when brilliant I see something project. Like that that's been stuck together. I'm like, hey, here's how to do it. You can make a intercom box. Have you ever lived in a house with an intercom? Oh, yes. Yes? <laughs> this one? <laughs> they, they were kind of s- standard in the 70s, too, in a lot of the houses here in Southern California. <laughs> Man, uh, that's kind of brilliant. So if you want to uh, go check that out, that's the thing. I, I ran across this because I, I love, like, just pointless stuff and man this is like pointless incarnate building a water-cooled raspberry pi for what cluster because awesome reasons all i will say about this Mm is it's pretty but that that that's got a long and short of it man i mean this is like a (laughs) closed loop it's got a little radiator on it so we got four eight pies in a cluster for whatever reason but he goes through like i mean he's doing his own uh Custom setups for the heat sinks, and he's got a little switch up there. It's pretty. It does look very good, although I think that switch needs the water cooling more than the pies. I don't know, man. Pie four gets <laughs> they, they get warm. <laughs> <laughs> they do get warm yeah the pi fours they do get uh very very warm um if you don't have any kind of active cooling on them they'll just crack adc very easily mm-hmm. but yeah no if you're already doing yeah, the that's dangerous. why you get yeah yeah <laughs> well that's no the one I got. my Pedro. raspberry pi 4 is now in here <laughs> and the raspberry pi 3 is uh in here <laughs> so <laughs> i can't have that one <laughs> though i will use it for the uh 8 gig version of the raspberry pi 4 that um that very same website they have a link for a diy um pc case for the raspberry pi 4 that looks very very nice and i'm feeling very very compelled to do it but uh yeah no the, if you're already running water cooling to all them pies run it to the switch too why pedro that's It'll just overkill. down on the noise it's <laughs> overkill <laughs> this is definitely the the Eight most beautiful pies cluster water cooled overkill overkill yeah. pedro that, you've gone too far <laughs> dial it back man <laughs> Oh, it's just going to the switch. Yeah. Okay, all right. A little over the line, man. Just you, you got to know your limitations. It's like, okay, pe- pe- people will think it's excessive if I do the switch. So it's- okay, all right, okay. But what I like about it is they really paid attention to the aesthetic looks of of the Pi cluster. It looks it's beautiful. They did such a good job at even cutting out the Raspberry Pi logo in the um, machining and. They just, most of the clusters we've covered are just, you know, Raspberry Pis stuck together on a piece of hardware, and that's it. No thought into how it looks. <laughs> and this was just beautiful. <laughs> um, again, back to it. I looked at it and I was like, that's nice looking. That would probably also be capable of scaring off home intruders. Or being honest. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if you walk into a house and say like, yeah, no. Mm, uh, <laughs> I don't know what that is. No. I'm just. I'm gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> just like it's 
<laughs> best we just not. Uh, if you could <laughs> tell us about what you have going on, man, if you got some pie powered projects or just something you think we should know about, you can leave us a YouTube comment. We might get it. You can not reply me on Twitter and I might see it like through the 70 or 80 notifications I have every morning. Um, Maybe an email, Pedro? Maybe a contact form. Yes. Possibly. Yes. It's almost, <laughs> almost as if you've now covered uh, all of the most effective ways, because I'm pretty sure running down the street to try and tackle us in these uncertain times, it's probably not the best idea right Send now. Send us a DM. <laughs> That'd be brilliant. That mm. Yeah. <laughs> On YouTube? Not for Finn. That no one sees. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no the best way is the, absolutely the contact form on linuxgamecast.com just it's cleverly hidden uh behind the contact button make sure you pick lwdw and the little topic box and yeah give us your name your email the subject and your message and someone guaranteed will have a look at it at some point <laughs> we absolutely will man and uh you know Hit us all. Um, you're at unaccounted for on Twitter, and yep, F O U R at Jill underscore Linux girl. <laughs> and man, you'll never guess mine, so I'm not even gonna tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if it's at Ven or at Ven. Yeah. at Ven, at Ven yes. is just at on Mastodon. <laughs> so, surprisingly, I've had a very easy time with my name, like getting it on most services. Like, yeah, no, yeah. Just, <laughs> mine were taken. I think the only one I ever got of the fancy URLs was on Google Plus. I got the plus Peter Mateus, mm. and I got mm. a few angry uh, hangouts messages from Brazilian people called the Peter Mateus. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> what is that yours? It should be mine. It's like I have about three times as many followers as you do. What? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Check this out. Uh, Vera Tenuta writes in because awesome. we're talking about ECC memory, that hipster stuff mm -hmm. that just comes in the favorite color of green. For what it's worth, ECC is important for today's modern file systems too. Yes. ZFS and BTRFS, mm -hmm. ButterFS can save you from flip bits. It can tell you if they are flipped, but depending on when it happened, it could get into. Well, when it happens, it could get you into trouble. FreeNAS insists you use ECC or. Useful, which I'm sure means happy hug fun time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not entirely sure because I went to the Urban Dictionary and I couldn't find an entry for it. I think it means yeah. you're sort of out of luck. Oh, okay, okay. That makes sense. I, yeah, I didn't I, know what it was either. <laughs> I'm frighteningly familiar with such spicy language. <laughs> <laughs> that was the closest one that I could find is you're sort of out of luck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, you know what? I did not know that about Freenas. It insists. I'm sure there's also a flag to make it de insist, though, right? Mm hmm. The Open Media Vault also uh, suggests, recommends even uh, strongly with some big red letters like you don't have ECC reps. Like, I know. <laughs> I put together that NAS for under 100 pounds. I know. <laughs> but ECC, brah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, thanks to Intel, ECC is terribly expensive right now. No, it's not. Uh, we, we, we went over that on Saturday's show, man. You can get reasonably fast, reasonably priced ECC. Yeah, available. Yeah. Second. If yeah, you're second just hand. going for 3200 which is the sweet spot, mm -hmm. admittedly, uh, that Brand you can actually get Amazon, that for like reasonable price. Like 170 bucks, yeah. Yeah, like, all right, again, it's not going to have uh, heat spreaders and it's not going to blink. You'll be, if you're like me, you're like, I'm cool, but. Although a lot of the Dell ECC RAM does come with heat spreaders. <laughs> That's a thing. Is that a new thing? Because I've taken apart no. a lot of the blade servers. <laughs> no, and those RAM sticks are teeny tiny low profile and they're exposed. <laughs> no, no, the the ones I have um uh one of my computers has has the um the RAM expansion boards and the expansion boards always have the heat spreaders. Oh. Okay. Yeah. For heat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, beautiful people. We gotta bounce out of here, but we will see you next week. Let's roll some credits. <gasps> is there a name for when you're afraid of things that roll like rollophobia <laughs> that's it's gonna be something like tricks by 
<laughs> Salem. Like, Duffophobia. Uh, yeah. Uh, cyclokinetophobia, something like that. Aww. <laughs> thank you, Darkwing. And thank you to Basil for increasing his pledge and He's to Zeno. <laughs> yeah, I just saw that. <laughs> All of your ECC RAM has heat breeders. Cool, man. <laughs> Spreeders. <laughs> All right. uh, spreaders. Third time's a charm. Yeah, most of my um, <laughs> most of my ECC RAM has spreaders on it uh, too. Um, that's, the, but in Blade servers, you, not as much as in Workstation. We'll see you next um, week, beautiful party people. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>